Hello. So today I'm going to talk about something that uh, someone asked me uh, a couple of days back, whether uh, quantitative finance is useful to retail traders or retail investors. Unfortunately, there is no short answer to this question and I will have to use a long answer to you know, respond to this question. Sometimes it does work, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes quant techniques are useful, uh, sometimes they are pretty useless for retail traders. For institutional traders, there is evidence that it, it works, especially if it is used properly uh, for a variety of things. But for retail traders, things are a bit different. And I'm going to talk about why things are a bit different for retail traders or retail investors. You know, you will have to understand what the institutional investors or institutional uh, companies are, you know, banks and, and private funds are. They, the people who actually do the investment and do the trade on behalf of this institution, they are not trading or investing their own money. They are using other people's money. For example, in the case of banks, the money that the banks use for investment for trading, it's uh, public money, you know, the deposits in most cases. They do get funding from external uh, parties, but most of the money is uh, the public money, the deposits. Similarly, for the funds, you know, they're high net worth individuals who uh, whose money they're, they're, they're playing with, they're investing. So they can take higher risk, but for retail traders, things are very different. And I'm going to tell you as to why for retail trader, it is not always uh, useful that you use quant techniques. Although in some cases, if you are a bit careful and if you follow some of the rules, uh, you can stick, still benefit from it. <clears throat> okay. So retail traders take a lot of risks actually. They trade their own money. They invest their own money. So if something happens, they're going to be in trouble something bad happens. So you have to be very conservative with whatever approach you use. It doesn't have to be, you know, a quant related approach, but even it is, if it is a human job, it doesn't mean you have learned something from somewhere, you have taken advice for someone. I think you have every reason to be a bit skeptical about it, right? So just to be clear, this is not an investment advice sort of a video. So if you're expecting that sort of a video, this is not the one, you can skip it. Um, so you have to be skeptical because your own money and um, you, you have to take that with a grain of salt and, and you could you, you have to really have to do more and more research on that just to be sure that um, uh, what you're doing is not too risky and uh, otherwise you might be losing a lot of money right so there are <clears throat> some of the things which retail investor have to really Keep in their mind if they want to use quant techniques or quantity finance techniques in their own, uh, you know, their own work, right? They are not professional quant finance people. They have learned from quant finance from some other people. They have taken some course or I don't know, they have read some blogs and they really want to then, you know, play around, use some Python code and, and you know, invest like a pro thinking that, you know, we are very smart and we, we're going to make a lot of money uh, doing this. I have never met any retail trader was actually made uh, an insane amount of money through quant trading. But I have met many quant retail traders who have used quant techniques to make decent money, okay, uh, through the investments or trading. Um, sometimes more money than they would otherwise make uh, without using quant finance techniques, right? So. It could be like if they hadn't used quant finance technique, they would have made like 10% return. With quant finance technique, they made like 13 or 14% return, about 3-4% more or 5% more. But I have not met anyone who has made like 20% extra. Uh, and those who are claiming, in most cases, they're actually lying. Uh, I'm sure you can find plenty of videos on YouTube where people are showing their own account, you know, showing that, you know, they're genius and they know some algorithms and they can beat the market. You know, I'll give you an example that, uh, you know, there was a company called LTCM and some of the finest quants, including some Nobel Prize winners, 
founded that company. They knew mathematics, quants, models more than anybody else in that. But that company did not do well. After five, six years, it went bankrupt. Well, they did make a lot of money initial years, but they made mistakes after that and, and the company went bankrupt. So that could happen, right? Because it was an institution, it was still fine. There was a bailout or somebody might have uh, bought it. But for individual traders, it's it's a nightmare experience. So one has to be very, very careful. Okay, Individual traders have or investors have less information compared to the institutional ones. You know, banks and, and these private funds, hedge funds and all, they have lots of information. Uh, something the retail do not, do not have access to. The infrastructure and, you know, the people, the that they have, uh, you don't have, right? Uh, many uh, institutional uh, companies like the, the hedge funds and all, they hire like top PhD, they have finest of the systems, you know, they uh, they pay them to, you know, do research uh, full time and, and it's very difficult to beat them actually on many things. So, so I think it will be, Unfair to say that you can beat the market very easily using quant techniques. I think if, if I'm saying this, I think I'm, I'm lying. So I think anybody who's saying this to you is, is a liar. Uh, there is no evidence of that. So don't trust such things. However, there are some good things actually. I'm going to come to that. But I'm actually warning you that a lot of the things uh, people talk about algo tradings and all that actually is not true. Uh, especially people who have worked in institutional uh, company in institutions, banks or funds and you know these places where you have seen billions and billions of dollars, many people have seen that. They laugh at these you know advices when they hear from retail traders and everything. Because that's not true actually you know there are a lot of uh, smart people actually have lost money. Uh, so don't be overconfident. All right, so there is no guarantee that uh, a lot of the quant techniques they work, but you will gain confidence on your strategy if you use the data and models to uh, supplement your own judgment, to prove the hypothesis that you yourself think, right, to gain more confidence. So if you use your own human judgment, so qualitative uh, judgment, and then you have uh, the access to data and you do some analysis on that just to be more confident on your strategy. That's a very good idea. And that's what many people do. In fact, we all do. We look at charts, we look at trends, you know, the basic things we all do. That's also in a way quantitative uh, finance. But you can also do a bit more than that, right? You know, looking at the moving average, looking at whether two, uh, you know, stock prices are co integrated or not whether mean reversion is applicable for some of the assets or not. Right? These are basic things, you know. Uh, I'm going to talk about these things later on, maybe in some videos. But these are some of the basic things, actually, you can use to sort of supplement your own personal judgment about a given financial asset, right? But you need not have to automate that, right? You do not blindly believe on some algorithm and then and be happy, right? You really need to then test it properly. So over-reliance on models is, is not a good thing. You really need to backtest your model very, very well. Backtesting is, is nothing but testing your model on historical data, right? Uh, and use all the best practices. Don't be super confident, right? Check for all scenarios, test your models properly. Um, and it need not be just model. Use simpler algorithms, simpler models. Right? Do not have to use some fancy algorithms that you probably don't even understand properly. Then follow the you know risk management practices. If you are uh, an investor and you are a serious investor, I'm sure you know about uh, the risk return principle. Right? If we expect huge return, be sure that you are taking a lot of risk and that could put you in trouble in some situations. This has happened to even some of the smartest people on the planet. If you do not know about them, I think you are not a serious investor, I would say. Read the, you know, what the bad things 
have happened to you know a lot of these people really smart people who are in the market so very good in to understand the basic risk management principles these are used in banks and you know all these big firms uh, but despite that many banks do face a lot of issues but many of these uh, private funds also they face a lot of these issues despite you know having good risk management teams framework people working on them but if you are doing that for yourself be honest with you otherwise you could be in trouble there is no such thing called get rich quickly especially in stock market doesn't work <clears throat> otherwise follow warren buffett uh, you know charlie munger warren buffett you know these people they they are also very good uh, assessment of uh, of risk and they go long term so and be a value investor uh, that's also a wonderful thing to do but by the way even in value investment you can use quantitative finance techniques you don't have to just use high frequency trading or those things just to be a quant finance expert even to assess a long term investment you could still use data and algorithms and and models to understand whether it's a good investment or not is nothing but research actually right you could do qualitative research you know going through the financial statement etc etc but you could also look at macroeconomic trends um a lot of other things right uh, macroeconomic trends and then you know stock price movement of the stock price how that's related to macroeconomic trends you know many other thing in population growth competitor economy you know a lot of things you can see you'll be surprised many private funds use alternate data also to do research not just for trading but for long term research for example they would collect data like okay how many uh, coffees uh, are, are are being sold every day uh, in in a given country right how many people are uh, using bicycle in a given city or given country right that may have also some sort of relationship with some industries and then they will find some relationship and you know use that for long term investment so it is a myth that for value investment you do not care about data you do not care about but quantitative research that's plain absurd you know in fact in fact many big organization including the banks that go for long term you know somewhat safer investment even they do a lot of research quant research you could also do that and it is much safer by the way because you are not in hurry to make a lot of money you have patience you can wait for many years and uh, there are also some rules to follow and but what i'm trying to say is that there you can use quant finance techniques as well basic techniques don't use too fancy ones right and sometimes uh you get bit lucky and then you might feel that you know you are a genius and you can beat the market that plain rubbish actually right unless you do it over a consistent period of time don't be too over confident about really have i met people who have actually cons- consistently met uh, you know be able to beat the market through quant finance techniques unless you have insider information that's a different thing though. but it does work in many situations for research is does work to supplement human judgment it also helps to verify your own hypothesis or bias regarding any particular investment there are some of the things to note uh, learn more and use less try to read more and more uh, from good resources books are the very good resources if you can read from research paper and books that's the best right um if you can talk to someone who is in this field uh, directly and have a one on one conversation that's also wonderful um don't take a lot of things on the social media very very seriously um uh, you know this is also interesting because i am also making this video on youtube but i must also say that you know uh, especially when it comes to investment advice uh, quant finance related or non quant finance related you you should be a bit careful uh, never trust anyone uh, just like that especially if, you know your investment investing a lot of money right so so learn a lot but use less use the ones you really understand right you really understand properly a lot of people make mistakes especially the ones who come from data science and ml machine learning areas there there is called libraries 
do not understand the models very well theoretically and they just go ahead with building models. That's not how it works in point finance. You really have to understand the mathematics behind it. Now you have to go in deeper into it and see where things can go wrong. So know that so that you actually know the risk you are taking. Right. As I said, uh, uh, you have to use the simpler techniques uh, and not the sophisticated ones that you probably don't understand that well. Over time, things uh, will change, but at least in the beginning, don't use the more sophisticated ones. Models are not always perfect. In fact, there is a saying that uh, models, all models are uh, wrong, some models are useful. It's a very popular saying. All models are wrong. Some models are useful. And be conservative in your approach. I have already talked about it. Do not have over expectation. Do not expect that you'll be making 50%, 60% return. That pretty uh, plain absurd. You know, you might be very lucky in some some situations, but um, that's not always possible. Uh, and good to talk to people who are also in this field. Uh, if you get a chance to talk to people who are who have been doing for for some time, uh, don't miss the opportunity. Um, so these are some of the things I want to share with you. If you have questions, uh, please ask in the comment section. Again, just to clarify, this is not an investment advice type of a video. So if I have uh, said something even remotely close to that, please don't take that very seriously. It's more of an academic sort of a video uh, where I was just telling you where things could work and where chances of things working is less. Any questions, do not forget to ask me in the comment section. Thanks guys.